TF2 is such a simple yet mechanically complex game that I highly doubt anyone on the planet would claim to know absolutely everything about it. And over the years I picked up my fair share of trivia and misunderstandings within the TF2 community about how the game plays, how the game works, the lore, or whatever it might be. So today we're going to be covering several TF2 in-game misconceptions. Note that this video is actually a sequel to the previous one which did surprisingly well, so thank you very much for that. Same basic rules apply, I'm going to be covering everything that most TF2 players do not know, or misconfuse, or whatever it might be. These will all be in-game mechanics, as while I could do an entirely separate video talking about the lore, adding that into here would just be far too confusing. Right, well, I'm going to cut the title screen intro as to save time, so let's just get started. Number 1. Saparama Continued So, in the last video I opened up with some facts about Saparama, that when you sap a sentry, you deal 33% less damage to it with your revolver. But since then, from this very helpful comment here left underneath the video, I've learned that sapper armor only applies to your sappers. Another spy can come along and be dealing full damage to the sentry under the effects of your sapper. This officially means that cooperative spy engineering is a thing, and you can always team up with your fellow spies to take down a big sentry nest. But then again, there should never be more than two spies on a single team. Number 2, 20% damage vulnerability on wearer. So many weapons like the Power Jack and the Bushwhacker and even the Southern Hospitality have this stat of 20% damage vulnerability on wearer. And while with the former two it's for all damage types, with the latter it's only for fire. Not many people know how this stat really works, so let me explain it for you. So it differs per weapon, which in terms of consistency is really annoying. All of the weapons I previously just listed, the Power Jack, the Bushwhacker and the Southern Hospitality only take 20% extra damage from their respective resources when you're holding the weapon. However, the Candy Cane for example, with its 25% damage vulnerability to explosives is active constantly, regardless of whether you're holding it or not. Why this is the case with the Candy Cane, I'm not too sure, but then again, if the health drop is passive I guess it only makes sense that this is passive, but this makes the weapon really bad. The more extreme example of 20% damage vulnerability on wearer is of course the 35% damage vulnerability on wearer, like for example with mini crits. However, why some weapons mark you for death and others make you just take more damage in general is really confusing. Number 3, Moonshots. Let's continue down our train of thought of Scout here for a second and let's talk about the Moonshot mechanic that both the Rep Assassin and the Sandman possess. So if your launched projectile travels further enough, it will deal a critical hit. For example, with the Rep Assassin this means a critical hit will deal 54 damage, and the stacking bleed. Not many players know this, as not many players really use these weapons, even though the Rap Assassin is Scout's just definitive best melee. But it's an interesting thing to know, as launching these weapons at range actually gives you a much better bonus than using them up close. Let's finalise our Scout train of thought here for number 4, what works on Uber Charge and what doesn't. So when I say this I'm talking about the stock medic Uber Charge, you know, the 8 seconds of invulnerability. So, most players know this, but the Sandman used to be able to completely stun Uber to targets, and this was an incredibly powerful ability to have. So, I'm basically going to talk about other things that do and don't work on Uber charged targets. Revising the former, the Sandman's modern day slow mechanic does still actually work on Uber charged targets, but it's nowhere near as powerful. Surprisingly to me, the Natasha's slower bullets do not work on Uber charged players, and they just completely ignore them. All of the shove mechanics you can think of still work on players, this being air blast or whatever it might be. And lastly, the man treads do not work on Uber charged targets. These are just four different types of affecting enemies that have very confusing stats when it comes to affecting Uber charged players. So I wanted to mention this on the list to clear up any misconceptions or confusions around stunning Uber charged targets. Practically only the Sandman can do it, and the air blast can, but not with the quick fix. Number five, healing ramp up. So the majority of modern day TF2 players are post meet your match update players. Only the real sweats and the traders who swear this game is going to get them out of bankruptcy still play from before gunmetal. So let me explain this to anyone who's new. Healing ramp up means that anything that has a passive health regeneration has to ramp up over time. A good example of this is the conch. You start with 1 health a tick and it ramps up to 4 health a tick the longer you don't take any damage. If you don't know what a tick is just consider it like a second. Other examples include Medic's passive health regeneration and of course the Amputator. This does make these weapons more balanced, however at the same time you're going to be taking damage a lot in this game, so you're only ever going to be getting a minuscule health regeneration. Number 6, the Sydney Sleeper can headshot. Literally nobody knows this, but since I believe Jungle Inferno, the Sydney Sleeper has been able to headshot. I think the reason nobody knows this is that nobody uses this damn thing except for me. 
because I truly believe this is the best sniper rifle in the game because it's an actual support weapon. A sniper is meant to be a support class. But that's a hot takes video for another day in case I get really lazy and decide to not upload for several months only to upload terrible quality videos and then leave. Number 7. Jumping with the jumper weapon still counts as taking damage. So we talked about healing ramp up earlier and the case that the less damage you take over time the longer the healing effect goes stronger. Well you see jumping with the rocket jumper actually resets the conscious passive health gen. This however means this also affects the crit heals. You see the longer you've gone without taking damage the faster the medic's medigun will heal you. However if you use the rocket jumper or the sticky jumper in this time it will be set back to zero. Crit heals would have been a pretty good honourable mention for this list, however the next category we're going to cover is so extensively long that I've decided to leave it off. If I have enough room for a 3 call, then it's definitely going to be top of the list. Number 8, Head Collection. Okay, this is the big one. So this here is the Islander. The more kills you get with the Islander, the more health you get, and the faster you move. Those are the basic principles of it, but there is so much more to cover so strap in for this. Firstly. The more heads you have, the more charge damage your shield does. I really don't know why this isn't listed on the weapon. Second, your head collection caps out at 4, so once you have 4 heads you don't gain any more speed boosts, any more charge shield damage, or any more health. Again, I don't know why this isn't listed on the weapon. You'd think that maybe getting more heads increases your shield charge time, but no that's not the case. Third, you can steal heads from other characters as well. For example, the airstrike and the Batco Bibbins, when they get kills, they also get stronger. And if a demo man with an Islander were to kill those characters with max heads, he would also gain them. So for example, if you kill an airstrike soldier who's got two kills, you will gain two heads. Fourth and final, hopefully, you can actually gain heads from enemy demo knights as well. If a demo knight has four heads and you kill him with the Islander, you will take those four heads as well. Again, I've tried to rush through this section as it very clearly could have gone on for hours, but the Islander is such a mechanically complex and strong weapon that I could probably dedicate my own video just to covering everything about it, but then again I'm sure someone else has before. And then finally for today, number 9, mislabeled weapons. So there are several weapons in game that have very important stats on them just missing. The Islander of course being a huge example of this as it doesn't have any of its listed stats apart from the fact that it takes your health. The back burner as well falls victim to this as it doesn't list that it can't random crit even though it cannot. The loose cannon lists that it has a faster projectile speed when this is actually not true and it's actually slower due to how the source engine handles wind dynamics or something. And lastly the pumps and the bison are both missing the stat that says they have a minus 34% clip size. These weapons only have full shots when the stock shotgun has 6 yet they do not list this. The loose cannon in fact, and of course the black bird effect actually came from Great Blue, so, you know, please go follow him. But I assume if you're watching my channel, you've already followed him. And that is going to do it for today. Sorry, these are only 9 facts instead of the 10 from previously, but I was starting to drag on a bit. And if we make a 3 call, I will definitely talk about Great Heels as the first one. Thank you very much everyone for watching today. Enjoy your double uploads, and I will see you later down the sunny road. Cheers.